false obedience. Unlawful obedience. St. Thomas Aquinas tells us that there are three kinds of obedience. First, that which is sufficient for salvation from one who obeys in what is obliged to. Second, the perfect one from the one who obeys in all that is lawful. And third, the indiscreet or illicit from the one who also obeys in what is illicit. In the first kind of obedience, man seeks sufficient obedience to save himself. But this obedience is incomplete and risky because it is done only for love of oneself and not for love of God. So it lacks virtue and is a trap for salvation. The second kind of obedience is the perfect obedience that we should all have, obeying what is lawful, above all, to obey God in His commandments in the first place, also to obey our superiors and thus succeed in overcoming our self-love. This obedience is indispensable for the attainment of holiness. In fact, it is the surrender of our will to the divine will which allows us to receive the grace to live in the will of God, which makes us grow in other virtues and finally leads us to salvation. The third kind of obedience is that which obeys in the unlawful, false obedience, and this is precisely the topic we are going to discuss. The Church calls us to be faithful and obedient to our superiors, beginning with our obedience to priests, bishops, and then to the Pope. However, such obedience cannot go beyond our conscience if it leads us to commit a sin. For example, being faithful to our, uh, to our priest doesn't mean that if we receive a homosexual proposal from him, we must obey for the sake of obeying. That is, first of all, there is obedience to God, in his commandments. Romans 13, verse 1. Everyone must submit to the public authorities, for there is no authority that God has not provided, so that those that exist were established by him. All human beings are imperfect. However, some have the privilege of being above others, and in that case, have the power to be authorities that govern us, both in secular life and in the Church. God calls us to abide by the authorities, and it is a sin not to do so. But this is where the conscience comes into work in us, when there is a disorder in the law that is imposed on us. And God has also given us the free will to choose what is best in these cases. For example, in China, they have forced families to have no more than one child. Then they changed the law to two children. Many people did not comply with this law because it imposed violations on their morals. So this kind of disobedience is never a sin, since the sin is more appropriate of the rulers. Even worse is the sin of submitting to the authorities of the Church when they ask us to do something illicit, I am referring to what is happening right now. In obedience to God, we must worship His Son Jesus, who has given Himself to us in the form of consecrated bread. For people who are not consecrated priests, it is a sacrilege to touch the body of Christ with our hands, an act of disobedience with eternal repercussions. The Church submits to the authorities of the earth and accepts the biosecurity protocols for the Holy Mass by showing herself obedient to earthly laws at the cost of offending God. In this way, the body of Christ loses importance and becomes an object that can contaminate us or that we must be disgusted by. The Church now wants to impose this sacrilege on us, that we touch the wounded body of Christ with hands full of detergent or with gloves, 
What a sacrilege. This makes it so that the Holy Mass ceases to be holy and that the, of, that the offering made to God becomes a desecration of his altar and the sacrilege of infinite proportions. The intention of receiving Christ in the Eucharist is the holiest thing we can have. But as St. Paul says, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 29, For whoever eats and drinks without discerning the body and blood of Christ, eats and drinks his own condemnation. Even in conversation with priests, I have been told that we must obey Pope Francis. I do not obey them because I do not accept him as Pope, because he is not a Catholic. He is an artist of deception and has already proven it with his services. Besides, by leaving the phrase, he who obeys is not mistaken, we are acting with blind and foolish obedience that will surely lead many millions of false obedient people to hell. In his apostolic exhortation, Amoris Laetitia, number 297, Jorge Mario Bergoglio, so called the Pope, unfortunately the highest authority of the Church, says, No one can be condemned forever, because that is not the logic of the Gospel. Let us remember that the logic of the Gospel is to repent and believe in the Gospel. It is to believe in Jesus, who tells us that on the day of judgment, many will perish. This lying, heretical, and blasphemous man treats Jesus as if he were a liar, for truth tells us that on the day of judgment, many will perish eternally. Matthew 25 Verse 41, then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Only the devil has denied the word of God. Now, Virgolio does. So those who want to condemn themselves can obey him. The devil denied the word of God in paradise. Genesis 3, verses from 1 to 3. The serpent was, was more cunning than all the animals of the field that the Lord had made. So he asked the woman, Is it true that God told you not to eat from any tree in the garden? The woman answered, We can eat the fruit of all the trees. But as for the fruit of the tree, which is in the middle of the garden, God has said to us, Do not eat of that tree, nor touch it or you will die. But the serpent said to the woman, It is not true, you will not die. As we can see, it is the son of the father of lies, the devil, who is ruling the church, so we cannot obey him. It is not that I promote disobedience to the church, as some may think. I am obedient to the faithful magisterium of the church, which is sustained by the word of God the Catechism and Tradition. Brothers and sisters, please open your eyes. Please open your ears. Please open your hearts to the truth. Do not lose your souls to false obedience. This is the time of great confusion. If you like this video, please give us a like. Subscribe to our channel, The Work of God. Share on social networks. And don't forget to leave your valuable comments. How did you like this reflection? God bless you.